this is a really common problem, uh, common symptom that we get. Um, if you're already looking at your diagnostic LEDs and you've, you've um, counted the flashes and you found that it has something to do with your pressure switch, either not closing um, or staying closed, um, this particular unit has multiple stages. And so the, the only difference in this unit and, and a standard unit would be the staging. Um, so it, on a standard system, it would just say pressure switch uh, sticking closed or pressure switch not closing. And so we'll show you a few of the things that can cause that. Um, this particular unit has two pressure switches. Most systems have one. Uh, again, this is a higher efficiency. This is what we would refer to as a 90% furnace, a 90 plus percent furnace. You could tell because of the PVC flue piping. Um, if you have metal flue piping attaching to your unit, then you have an 80% furnace and you would typically just have one pressure switch. So let's start with the pressure switch is sticking closed. Um, that basically means that when this motor stopped and the furnace stopped its cycle, that switch stayed closed, which it should not. It's a normally open switch. Um, when that happens, uh, it could be the switch, but a lot of times it can be an obstruction in the line, um, you know, debris, and, and it causing it to not relieve that pressure and kind of hold that switch closed. So what you can do is obviously make sure the power is disconnected. You can pull the rubber uh, tubes off of the switch and if you have multiple tubes and uh, going into the switch I would absolutely take a picture, uh, write it down. There's typically only one. And so what you want to do is, is look in the tube, um, shine you a light in the port. You do not want to uh, blow into this port and try to see if the bladder's good. You will mess it up. Um, it'll do the same thing under under vacuum if you try to uh, suck the switch in it will damage it and so what you want to do is, is get your light and look down in there and you can typically stick like an allen key down in there uh, just really gently and a lot of times if there is something stuck in here you can see it on the edge and it'll look kind of like a, a gray crusty uh, kind of medium and it's just something that occurs from the combustion gases of the furnace and so that's a big thing to look for if it's sticking closed. Um, you can also tap on it to try to get it to open up if, if, the, if it's actually sticking closed. And then you wanna just go basically, um, you know, inch by inch and inspect the tubing. Uh, this furnace is newer, so everything's in really good shape, but any cracks in the tubing can cause problems with your pressure uh, switch. Um, they actually can can fall off of the ports. It's not common, but it does happen. And so those are the kind of things that you're looking for when one is sticking closed. Um, there are advanced troubleshooting steps that you can take, but they typically require specialty tools. If you read on this pressure switch, it'll actually tell you the amount of pressure you need to close that switch. And so this is less than one inch of water column. So that's, that's very, very little pressure. And that's why you cannot, um, you know, blow in it or, or try to suck on it to get it to close. So that's if it's sticking closed. Um, obviously you can recycle the furnace and if it runs and does its thing, and then when it ends its cycle, it gives you another code that the pressure switch is still sticking there's a pretty good chance that that pressure switch needs to be replaced. Um, and basically it, it, it ran the second time because you were able to tap on it and get it to open up and reset and then the same problem occurred. So that's one way that they can fail. The other way that they can fail is, is by failing to close. So sequence of operations, your furnace starts, this motor starts and it does not pull this switch closed. Um, that typically, that, that can also be a restriction in it. Um, cracked tubing, you know, um, anything like that that's causing the pressure not to move from, from the fan housing into the switch. Um, so obviously inspect the same things, but in addition to that, um, this is the exhaust for the furnace. You can see that it's coming out of this motor. And if you have a mud dauber nest, depending on what part of the country you're in, a bird's nest, um, 
We've had situations where people have had their homes re-roofed and the roofers actually put a cap on this 90% furnace. If any of those things happen, then it will not draft properly and this switch will not close. Um, that's where the specialty tools can really come into place. Like if you have a draft gauge for measuring draft, then obviously you can pull this hose off, hook up your meter, and see how much draft it's actually pulling. You can see that it's supposed to close at 0.76 inches of water column, uh, way less than one PSI. All of that will typically always be written on the pressure switch. So if your meter shows that you have more than enough draft over and above what is beyond on this and that switch is still not closing, then that switch has most likely failed. If you have less than that amount of draft, that's when you need to start looking to see if there's a restriction in the flue piping. Um, on a 90 percenter, this could be waterlogged, causing it not to draft properly. It can definitely be something other than the switch. Um, if you can find a local supply house in your area to sell you a pressure switch, they are fairly easy to change. Typically, um, they need to be sold to a licensed heating and air conditioning contractor. But if you can help get that diagnosed, you might be ahead of the game by letting the company know uh, what you've discovered so far when you call them.